Hello! In this video, we will look into basic principles of Swiss type lathe machines programming in SprutCam. The first question we have to look at is the structure of the Swiss lathe machine. We have done benchmarking analysis of a whole array of manufacturers and have come to the conclusion that all machines have pretty much the same structure and the Swiss type lathe usually has two spindles the main spindle and counter spindle and has two control channels. This means that there is the first control channel which controls X1, Y1, C1 and Z1 axis and the second channel which controls X2, Y2, C2 and Z2 axis. What does it mean two channels? This means that there are two and C programs synchronized between each other. The first one controls the machining on the main spindle. The second one is in charge of the machining on the counter spindle. The machines of this type also have a bar feeder and a part receiver. So all these components need to be controlled. We have created a scheme of such a machine. This machine, as well as Hanwha 32 and Goodway SW20 and other ones come with SprutCam X. The above-mentioned machines also have the same structure. Well, this is it on the machine structure. The next thing we will do is create a basic project or a template of a project for machining on Swiss type machines. So I'm planning to machine this part. It has been designed in SprutCam X and we can say it has been parameterized. All dimensions can be changed. There are a couple of holes inside, so we'll be making this part. I had prepared such a project. Set a workpiece. The workpiece that I have is a bar with diameter 20 millimeters. Here it's a little bit longer. So we have just the part. The part is fixed. We have chosen Goodway SW20 as our machine. I have set the tools so that we don't spend time setting them later. So I have a cutoff tool here, an OD turn tool. Here is also a boring tool. And there is also a cutter of some kind. So the part is fixed in the main spindle. That's pretty much it. I don't have any operations on my list. So, let's look at what minimum set of operations we must create to program the machining of this part. So, the first operation on Swiss type machines must be the bar feeding operation. It's located here, the move part group. The operation is called bar feeding. I create an operation. The operation has one main parameter, which controls how much we have to retract the bar. So, we have the Z1 axis in the minimum position. Now it's in the overhang position. That is, it is pressed down as much as possible and the part is extended as much as possible. We have to make sure that the overhang of the part from the moving collet corresponds to this distance. Let me hide some components of the machine. For instance, I don't need to see the bed. I don't want to see that either. I'll make this part semi-transparent. So if I calculate the toolpath of this operation, by default part overhang is calculated as part length plus the width of the cutoff tool plus some reserve. At the very beginning of the toolpath I have the cutoff tool near the workpiece as a stop. It remains here in the condition it was in after OD roughing of the part. So if I start the simulation, here I have the main spindle retracted, the collet is unclamped and the bar is facing my cutter. Then the collet is clamped and the tool is retracted. There you go. Well, here it goes pretty high. Let's change the tool change position on the machine. This is probably where we're going to lead off. That's good. This is the bar feeding operation. Then comes the group of machining operations 
with the main spindle. Let me for example make a lathe operation OD roughing with OD turn tool. Let me set a job assignment. All right, well, let's cut it up to here somewhere. So it's 0 0.1 here. Okay, there is some machining being done in the main spindle. The next operation is, for instance, lathe part off. So we don't machine everything. I create lathe part off operation. In the job assignment, I specify that I cut off from this side. I calculate the toolpath. Then we perform the operation. Well, that's pretty much it. So that's it for the machining with the main spindle at the moment. Now the next important thing. Since we have a two-channel machine and we have two workpieces in the work zone simultaneously, we must create two workpieces in our workflow. So basically I'm saying that what I had in the main spindle was the first part. Here it is, part one. The machining result is here. But I have another part in the machine at the same time. This part is in the counter spindle. So it's set up like this. Let me set it to minus 15 here. Not only that, but here we already see that as a workpiece of this part, we have the machining result of what was done in the main spindle. Here we have a stump of the bar left over. That's because I forgot that in this lathe part of operation, I need to turn on the chips removal. Then I recalculate and go here. Here is my workpiece for the part that will be machined in the counter spindle. OK, now I need to ensure that my part go into the counter spindle. So the part was in the main spindle. It was roughed and cut. Now we have to do the takeover. I create a new operation. Right here, the move part group. Turn takeover operation. This operation has a set of parameters. Here are pick feed and return feed distances. But where it should drag the part as a result is determined by which part comes next. And for the second part, for example, I'd like to set the machining with this tool in the counter spindle. Well, I'll create an OD roughing operation in the counter spindle. I will choose this tool. So here is the job assignment. Yes, like that. Okay, this thing is in the way. We'll machine up to here and from here, for example. So in principle, I can calculate all these operations. Okay. Let's make the machine visible. So here I have the cursor on the main machine. I can see that I have two parts. If I move the cursor between the parts, that's what I see. I can simulate the machining and check how things work here. So first the bar feeding, then the OD roughing and lathe part off. Turn takeover the part moves. And after that, OD roughing in the counter spindle. In principle, when we design a process, it is convenient for us to design it this way. Machining in the main spindle, takeover, OD roughing in the counter spindle. And at the end here, I did not actually create it, part ejection operation. It doesn't need to be created, I have it in the post processor. Maybe in the future we will be adding this operation. Right now there is no need for it. The NC program will be correct. Here we go. 
but we know that our machine has two channels and the first and second workpieces are machined simultaneously. In simulation mode we can turn on this multi-channel mode. So the operations were separated. The operations that will be performed in the main spindle and the operations that will be performed in the counter spindle. There is a lathe part off with the takeover. These lines are synchronization points, that is where one channel must wait for the other channel. Now I can run the simulation. Here we see right away that I have two parts. The second part is half machined. If I start the simulation, I have the bar feeding at the same time. Here we have OD roughing in two channels simultaneously. Then the waiting, the counter spindle takeover, part of, and return. And so we have designed this consecutive process. And as for this parallel process, we got it automatically. Again, what happened? Let me show you a slide I prepared. Here it is. So, automatic reordering of operations and synchronization. That is, we design a consecutive process and then we can simulate both a consecutive process and a parallel process. In the consecutive process we have bar feeding, main spindle machining, if necessary machining in two spindles, cut off and take over, then subspindle machining and part ejection. So these two and these two are done simultaneously. These are the most time-consuming processes. Machining in two spindles and machining in two spindles and takeover are the next steps respectively. Sprutcam performs this conversion automatically. This is, I think, one of the main advantages that we have in Sprutcam X. So back to our project. Well, that's probably all I wanted to show you at this point. The next thing we will look at is the use of a rotary cutting tool in the opposite position for machining in the main spindle and in the counter spindle. OD roughing in the main spindle, nothing special. So we create a lathe hole machining operation. This is the kind of tool we got. So I will create a scheme of the approach. First on the Z1 axis, then on X and Y. That's how we do the calculation. So if you look at the simulation, we have this kind of machining. Approach. That's fast. Sorry, again. All right, now machining in the counter spindle. So we'd like to machine this hole. I go to a counter spindle operation and I create a lathe hole machining operation. We have this tool selected. Because these operations have been cancelled, our workpiece condition is somewhat suboptimal. So I'm going to recalculate the whole project now. OK. We can go here and in single channel mode check how we're going to do the machining. Tool approach and machining. So what is the peculiarity of working with these blocks in the counter spindle? The fact is that the tool is led on the X1, Y1 axis controlled from the main spindle channel. 
then the counter spindle you could say rubs against the tool on the X2 and Z2 axis. So you need to use two channels in order to use the tool. So if I turn on multi-channel mode, we see that our newly created operations are synchronized. That is, there are synchronization points between them. If I run the simulation in multi-channel mode, then the machining, as you have seen, is done in the simultaneous mode. Now the return. And then a takeover. To save time, I have prepared a project that uses all of the tools from this block. OK, we're going to load it up now. Here we have three operations in the main spindle. Drilling, chamfer, tapping. With these three tools. And in the counter spindle. Drilling, chamfer, tapping. Let's make it easier to observe the simulation. I'm going to turn off the visibility of these blocks. I will make this block transparent and in the top view. Let's see how our machining goes. I am skipping the roughing. Here in this project there is also a contouring operation, hex machining. And then we have this kind of simultaneous machining in two spindles. So we have drilling going on now both on the left and right. And so on. And then the part off. Immediately a logical question arises. And if I do not want to synchronize? these and these operations. Can I not synchronize them? No, I cannot. If the machining is done in the counter spindle, once again, I say that you need to lead in the tools on the axis of the main spindle, even if I delete some operation from the main spindle. For example, let's say I don't have a chamfer operation. Let me delete it. And after that, I'll recalculate again, because the structure of the project has changed. Here, in this case, a special operation, weight tool number 12, is created. So, this operation does nothing, it only leads in the tool, and then waits until the whole machining is done in the counter spindle operation. I can delete all operations in the same way. In this case, I will have created accordingly three such weight operations. The question here is how Sprutkamax knows where to insert this weight operation. So one more time. We don't have it in this tree, but in multi-channel mode this operation appears. So we can say that this weight operation is paired with this operation. And then there is the to machine after parameter after drilling in this case. It is calculated automatically. But if you don't like it, you can insert the operation where you want it. However, Sprutcam X calculates the location itself quite optimally. Well, that's probably all I want to say about machining with a rotary cutting tool in the main and counter spindle at the same time. The next issue we will look at is the machining of long shafts. We are going to machine, for example, a part like this. The dimensions are given. I have prepared this project and selected a new machine as well. So the Hanwha 32 machine. Well, basically the structure of the machine is the same as the previous Goodway SW20. So I have two parts here and nothing else at the moment. The first thing we do, we create 
an operation. We create the operation bar feeding. Let's set the bar overhang. It is length of the part plus width of the cutoff tool and some additional distance. Let me make it more convenient for you. I'll make all of this invisible. It's probably a little more convenient that way. OK, I'm going back. The bar feeding retracts away the movable collet. So this part stays at this place. Since I don't want to extend the entire overhang of the part at once, here I am set in this distance. Let's make it deeper. So let me set the minimum allowed overhang. It is going to be 32. Besides, here I make the overhang 70 millimeters. So in principle, when I set this parameter, at most I can machine about 30 millimeters on the bar. In the next operation, we will create OD roughing and program the machining. Something like this. 2 mm here. OK, we have done the external machining. We can repeat the simulation from the start. OK, a recalculation. Feed it the bar. Swap the tools. Did the roughing. So, next. I would like to grip my part with the counter spindle. Here, move part, sub spindle working operation. OK, what parameters do we have here? The first parameter is the main spindle position in which we are gripping. So we have 0 here by default. Let's stick with 0 here. You can even leave the gray parameter. The next is pick position. So in this case, we have the counter spindle as the tool. This point is the setting point of the counter spindle as a tool. You can go to tool settings and change the length corrector, and this point will change. So this will be the zero of the part provided that the counter spindle moves on x2, z2 axis. Let me grab 12 millimeters, for example. That's the big feed distance. That is how much we go at the working feed. The next parameter will control whether I need to move the workpiece to a new position. I turn this parameter on. I have the overhang at 70. So I increase it, for example, to this position. I'd like to have the part here. This checkbox controls along which axis the feeding will be made. Well, let me turn it off. And there is a checkbox right here whether we need to make the return. Let me turn it on for now. Then we'll turn it off. The return feed distance will be set to 15 millimeters on the working feed. So what we get here if we run the simulation. Here is the counter spindle. It does the approach. Then the last 15 millimeters it travels on the working feed. Take over and the feeding. In this case, the feeding comes at the expense of the counter spindle axis. After that, it's retract on the working feed and the return of the counter spindle. Here, if I turn this checkbox on, we don't need to do the return. So, if after the counter spindle operation the return is not performed, 
The counter spindle remains clamped and all further operations are performed in two spindles. Ok, now this checkbox. Let's see. So that's what it's about. We also have the approach on the working feed. Take over. Now please pay attention that we have the main spindle moving away. And after that it comes up. That's it. And the spindle hasn't moved away. The spindle has stayed here clamped. In principle this checkbox is turned on by default for the Swiss type machines. If there is no z-axis, it is absent completely. Ok, we have these clamping parameters here. We have the gripper clamp in this case. By default, they are filled in with data from the machine kinematic scheme. Ok, the next thing I'd like to do is to rough a little bit here and work on the groove, for example. I select OD roughing again right here. Change in direction. Set the point. One millimeter. It's right up to here, for example. Ok, let's start. Simulation. Pardon. Engage. Now we see a collision. Sorry. That is, we clamped too close. So we don't have enough distance. I go to this operation and I say that the pick position will be not 12, but 10 millimeters. I'll recalculate everything since a few operations have changed here. Up to here, it's all clamped. Everything goes perfectly. And as we can see, we have the main spindle and the counter spindle synchronized. Since we didn't perform a return in the previous operations. Just an example, I'll also create a grooving machining operation. Lathe OD grooving. OK. Here is the grooving from here. And there you go. Grooving will also be done simultaneously in both spindles. In general, further machining, takeover if it's necessary and so on, is done in the same way. And one more thing. Regarding the multi-channel mode, all these operations, since I was working with the main spindle, are in channel 1. The operation subspindle working is in the second channel, because the X2, Z2 axis are involved. Accordingly, the timing marks are inserted here, that is, bar feeding, then OD roughing, then bar feeding, and further machining is carried on in the channel. Well, that's it. Thank you very much.